ses deneme. Başlıyorum. Ses, ses. Morning everyone. I hope you all can hear and understand me. Esteemed Consulate General of India to Istanbul, Your Excellency, respected Istanbul Gedik University Chair of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Hülya Gedik, respected Director, Mr. Ahmet Kesik, esteemed members of India, Tur Turkey business community, honored guests, dear students of Istanbul Gedik University. Welcome to First India Turkey Business uh, Business Summit 2023. <laughs> the theme of our summit, which we organize for the first time this year and will be held every year from now on, is exploring incredible India. Doing business needs more knowledge more than ever. To do more business, we need to know each other more. Today at this summit, in various aspects, we are going to learn more about India and search for new opportunities to improve bilateral trade. Turkey and India has more than $12 billion bilater bilateral trade by 2022. Turkish exports to India amounted to $1.64 billion by an increasing 25.5%, and imports reached to historic peak 10.7 billion dollars by rising 34.8% in 2022 and in 2023 for uh, the last 11 months let's say the numbers are quite similar as now uh, more than ever leading turkish companies are looking to grow their presence in south and southeast asia eager to take advantage of business opportunities in the region in this context, India could offer many opportunities to Turkey. On the other hand, with its growing economy and young population, and of course with its geographical advantages, Turkey also can offer many opportunities to India. So let's know each other more and make the trade bigger. Dear guests, without telling more, I now welcome uh, I welcome you once again and would like to invite Professor Mr. Ahmed Kesik, Rector of Gedik University on stage to deliver his opening remarks. Good morning, 
Dear Chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Honorable Council General, members of DEIC Turkey, India Business Council, esteemed academicians and beloved students, I would like to extend a warm welcome to every one of you for being here on this significant day. Istanbul Gedik University has been a home to 9,000 students and 500 uh, academicians as of today. Entrepreneurship, R&D, and innovation among our fundamental values have always been at the focal points of our university. Our greatest vision is to be an innovative, diverse, value-creating, excellence-driven global university that shapes the future through sustainable education programs with exclusive competent faculty members. Main reason for us being here today are to discuss and strengthen the communication and relationship between culturally rich India and our beautiful country, Turkey. It's a well-known fact that the world is rapidly globalizing in every aspect with constant changes and advancement in information, technology, industry, and trade. The best way to adapt to these changes and developments is to establish contacts and share knowledge with experts, business academicians, business professionals, academicians, scientists, and who are always profi proficient in their fields. I have no doubt that this summit will serve, serve this purpose and enhance all kinds of beneficial exchanges between two our countries, two countries. Within this year, Istanbul Gedik University has signed an MOU with T-Hub, the world's largest innovation campus in Hyderabad, India, and our collaboration and ties are strengthening day by day the following subsequent visits. The ongoing IMAP program conducted by our university in collaboration with T-Hub is particularly valuable for communication between Turkey and India, and as it paves the way for our entrepreneurs and startups to enter both Indian and broader East Asian markets. All information is in, available on our website and social media platforms. At the end of the day, we are going to select eligible startup firms from Turkey to be part of T-Hub IMAP program. And this program will continue for six months. After six months, these startups, select eligible startups, will take part of Indian market. Furthermore, we have leased a space in T-Hub. Last week, we signed contract with T-Hub. At the, at the moment, we are part of T-Hub, and we will be having research projects uh, in T-Hub, and also our faculty members and students with their startup firms are going to take part in all programs of T-Hub, and also they will engage uh, their uh, startups uh, with uh, the counterpart startups in T-Hub. So we have the opportunity to stay informed about significant developments uh, in the field of innovation, both globally and within the context of India. 
Being part of T-Hub community enables us to establish connections, communications with startups, entrepreneurs, and investors in the business world. So we are going to open a window for our faculty members and students to enter East Asian markets with their prototypes and products. And lastly, our uh, Council General of Turkey in Hyderabad applied our Minister, Turkish Minister of Trade, Minister of Industry, to establish TTO office in THAB. Of course, Istanbul Gedik University is going to be part of a new TTO office uh, in the future, and hopefully uh, our Council General is uh, communicating with uh, Turkish Ministry of Trade. Hopefully, uh, in shortly, we are going to establish a new TTO office in THAB, and Istanbul Gedik University is going to be part partner of uh, TTO office in Hyderabad. Once again, I welcome you all and extend my wishes for a healthy, peaceful, and happy new year to each one of you. I hope that in the coming year, together, we will achieve even greater and more beneficial endeavors. And I just talked to uh, Honorable Consul General of India, starting from 2024, we are going to be starting and organizing uh, annual summit uh, with Indian uh, consul, Consulate General at uh, Gedik University. And we are going to organize such uh, international conference regularly with uh, Indian uh, Consulate uh, General. So we are going to bring um, all international circles, uh, all international businessmen, business persons, and students, and uh, experts from Turkey and India at our university. And most likely, we are going to organize it in May, and they will be uh, part of this such uh, great uh, program, and we will share the information in the coming days uh, after we decide on the time. And thank you so much for participating in such significant conference. <laughs> Thank you, dear Mr. Ahmed Gesik. Well, dear guests, uh, dear students, uh, we're now going to listen to Ms. Sulia Gedik, but before I invite her uh, on stage, I would like to share a video with you. I don't know as if you know, many of us are aware, uh, but Sulia Gedik is also uh, working as the chair of the Turkey India Business Council and has a great community team of members of this council and they visited India uh, last year. This is a hint of India, a little taste of India for you. This video is from that visit. delegation 
as the start of uh, a very, very encouraging response from both the sides. Uh, the, the kind of delegation that we saw, uh, you know, leading players from the, from the sectors where the Turkey has its strengths, will automatically see a similar response from Indian side. So we really look forward to strengthening relationships and trade and investment uh, in times to come. Uh, to have such an interaction for a long time with the uh, Turkish delegation. And uh, my dream has come true today that it's a very, very diverse delegation, uh, which is having uh, people from various sectors, from investment interests to trade investments. And a very senior officer from our government of India had participated in that. We are very happy that uh, Turkey, which is a very important partner with India, in terms of increase in our trade relations, which has touched nearly 11 billion uh, US dollars in the last year. And there has been a phenomenal growth of 50% in the trade relation, despite the challenges thrown by COVID, which shows that there is a great opportunity in these two countries. We have enormous complementarities in our strengths. So we are not competitors, we are actually collaborators. Tarihi ilişkilerin üzerine kurulmuş bir ilişkilerimiz var, ikili ilişkilerimiz var. Şimdi Kurtuluş Savaşı'nda bize yardımcı oldular, maddi manevi olarak desteklediler. Ama aynı zamanda da Hindistan'ın bağımsızlığına giden yolda Türk milli mücadelesi ilham kaynağı oldu. Pek çok ülkeye olduğu gibi. Şimdi bunların üzerine kurulmuş bir e, yapı var. E, şu anki ilişkilerimiz e, e, gayet e, özellikle ekonomik ve kültürel açıdan gayet iyi bir e, durumda. E, 2017 yılında e, Sayın Cumhurbaşkanımız Hindistan'ı ziyaret ettiğinde e, ikili ticaret hacmi olarak 10 milyar dolar bir hedef koymuştu. Çok kısa bir süre sonra bugün artık bu 10 milyar doları aşmış durumdayız. Şimdi hedefimiz artık 20 milyar dolar. First of all, I would like to uh, express my happiness today. Today is a, a very special day for us. We are hosting a business delegation from Turkey. Uh, Foreign Economic Relations Board of Turkey has organized a business trip here and I am so grateful to them that they have included Hyderabad. Hyderabad is a hub in terms of many sectors. So that shows that we have many, plenty of uh, opportunities here. I want the Turkish businessmen to discover more about Hyderabad. India and Turkey have a great opportunity to look at how do we grow business. Uh, a lot of our uh, sector, especially the medium, small and medium uh, enterprises are looking at expanding their businesses. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, uh, inquiry and a lot of interest in India because uh, this is the third Turkish delegation which has come in the last uh, three months and uh, we welcome each of these. So I think Turkey is very well placed, it's in the heart of Europe, you know, on one side you have Europe, on the other side you have Asia, uh, the culture is very similar to India, uh, we share a lot of things, not only words, but our food, uh, you know, palate as well. Uh, by and large, I think India, there are several Indian companies already invested in into Turkey, I believe Mahindra is there, Taffy is there, Tata Group, a number of the large ones are there, including the smaller ones. But they definitely see that Turkey as, you know, for the domestic consumption as well as, you know, to have a base in Europe because you can export to, uh, you know, entire EU. So there's a lot of potential. I see a lot of Indian companies looking at, uh, you know, enhancing their um, uh, exposure in, in Europe, in Turkey. And I'm very happy to say that we were very happy with the business delegation led by Gedik, uh, Ms. Gedik uh, from the chamber. 
which visited us today at the IMC Chamber of Commerce. We had a very good interactions, and which is actually going on. And I, I see that in the you know months to come that uh, we will be able to increase our bilateral trade. India is a fantastic country. It's a country, it can be called continent as well. And the population is exceeding even the China. So there are many opportunities. And when we went there, we visited uh, different uh, Chamber of Commerce, Chamber of Trade, Invest India, and Ministry of Trade. And uh, we noticed a very big opportunity in India. And then we observed the uh, climate, business climate in India. And then we raised uh, a big interest uh, between the Turkish companies and also uh, Indian companies. This was our success in this uh, visit. And we believe that India has great opportunities. And, uh, you know, more we visit uh, India and also more we meet the Indian companies, we believe that more opportunities we will face with them. I feel as being the chairperson of uh, the Turkey India Business Council, uh, very happy about this visit. And, uh, of course, we will repeat uh, uh, later on. And this visit will be a very fruitful uh, visit. And hopefully also the rest of our delegates uh, are able to make uh, uh, more businesses in India. Thank you. The more, the more we see each other, the more business we do, uh, as uh, Ms. Gedik says. So these visits will continue. Recently, uh, the Indian uh, Business Society has visited Turkey as well. And now I am honored to uh, invite uh, Ms. Silvia Gedik on stage for her speech. With your applauses. Thank you. Uh, it was a uh, very memorable days that we had uh, last year in 2022 uh, with our uh, DAIC uh, friends. But uh, after, uh, there was a good memories anyhow. So, Rector of uh, Istanbul Gedik University and Honorable Consul General of India to Turkey. Dear uh, Gedik students, uh, good morning, günaydın hepimize and Selma Hanım, also my Dik friends. I'm so uh, happy that you made it to come here and uh, all these happenings is uh, good to, in your presence. So I'm de uh, delighted to deliver a talk on the topic of Incredible India at the Gedik University. This was my dream, actually, because I was uh, trying to organize a, a, like a seminar or a forum to make our students uh, know uh, India and the relationship between Turkey and India. And uh, because of my, you know, the chairperson of uh, DEIC, Turkish Business Council, uh, I like India. I like Indian people. Uh, this is how I should uh, start, because I like the warmth and sincerity of the Indian people. And uh, also the combination of uh, different cultures and different religions has uh, always attracted to my interest and attention. And in this regards, I'm very happy to have served as uh, the chairperson for the last three years. If somebody asks me to describe um, India in one word, I would say contrasts. Because um, India is the country with full of contrasts. It, it is the only country in the world where differences exist with great harmony. There are no other country like India. It's a unique country. Its culture, religion, tradition, lifestyle have no similarities with any other nation. My description of uh, India is a country of full of contrasts. Why? When we look at uh, 
Uh, is it working now? The connection you can have. Okay. Uh, when we look at uh, 10 top of the richest businessmen in the world, we see Mukesh Ambani at uh, with 84 billion US dollar revenue, whereas the uh, minimum wages in India is uh, 5,340 rupee, which makes about uh, 65 US dollar per month. This is the latest information I got uh, from internet uh, last night. And um, we all know that India is also strong at nuclear power, nuclear energy, but there are also houses uh, which constantly have electricity cut. So even though uh, India having two dozen local languages over a hundred dialects, still a very large part of population speaks English. Despite the low income per capita and poverty, it's expected that India will become the third largest economy in the world in the coming years. Uh, so there are so many different uh, differences uh, and contrasts, but there's a great harmony in this beautiful and incredible India. Uh, so what GEDIC is doing in India, so I would like to give you a brief information. Uh, first of all, um, yeah, this year we decided to invest in India, and GEDIC is very selective and careful uh, when choosing where to invest. We examined in India in uh, many aspects before taking this decision. The main reason in investing in India is to be close to the raw material sources. The raw material that we need does not exist, unfortunately, in our country. So we have been purchasing this raw material, which is stainless steel, uh, uh, from India for, for long. And the second reason in, in, is India is very price sensitive and competitive market. The cost of the product in India will be much less than producing in Turkey. We are not able to compete with Far Eastern products by producing in Turkey. Due to our uh, comparatively high production cost plus transport cost, the only way to sell to Southeastern countries and Far East countries to produce in their countries. So this is the reason why we are, uh, we decided to invest in India. We are all observing the manufacturing companies are moving from Europe to Asia Pacific countries for the last 15 and 20 years. GEDIC doesn't want to be too late to be in the same boat with the other manufacturing companies in the same fields. And um, I'm pleased and thankful His Excellency Mr. Mijito Vinito, Council General of India, for his participation today's summit. He is a young, active, and dynamic diplomat. He is the first Indian for me who speaks English with an American accent. We both have a common interest to increase the trade volume between our countries. There is a big imbalance in the trade, as uh, Hande Hanum says, between Turkey and India in the favor of India. However, when the young people like our students here today, start to understand the capabilities and the resources of both countries, they will not miss the opportunity arising in India and in Turkey. When we first met the uh, Council General, it was in July, I guess, or August, okay. He invited me to a nice restaurant in Ortaköy, and he gave me the book whose author is uh, Dr. Uh, Jay Shankar of the External Affairs, Minister of India. Uh, the name of the book is The, the India Way. Uh, the ones who are interested in, about India, uh, I highly recommend to take and to buy this uh, book. 
And uh, I read the following quote from uh, Dr. Jay Shankar, which I agree 100%. Asia is being shaped largely by the outlook of the US, the power of China, the weight of Russia, the collectivism of Asian, the volatile of the Middle East, and the rise of India. So I want to share this uh, in Turkish as well to let uh, our students uh, understand deeply and think about on this uh, quote. Uh, Hindistanların ee, çok değerli bir e, dış işleri bakanı var. E, Doktor Jay Shankar ve kitabı var. India Way. Ve bunu mutlaka edinmenizi isterim. Hindistan'a olan ilginiz de böylelikle çok artar. Orada diyor ki, ki bu şu anki e, anahtar cümle. Asya büyük ölçüde Amerika'nın bakış açısı, Çin'in gücü, Rusya'nın ağırlığı, Asya'nın kolektizmi, Orta Doğu'nun değişkenliği ve Hindistan'ın yükselişiyle şekilleniyor. Ve şu anki Türkiye'de e, ve Türkiye'nin bunu çok iyi anlaması ve Türk şirketlerinin de artık e, Asya Pasifik doğru yatırım yapmaları gerektiği, çünkü üretimin artık o tarafa doğru gittiği, Avrupa'nın yavaşladığı, Avrupa'nın büyük bir resesyon içinde olduğunu hepimizin çok iyi anladığı bir e, aşamadayız. Ve bunu siz bu yaşlarda daha henüz okurken bilmenizi ve bu şekilde de e, yönlenmenizi, araştırmalarınızı bu doğrultuda yapmanızı ben şahsen mütevelliyet başkanınız olarak çok arzu ediyorum. Çok teşekkür ediyorum beni dinlediğiniz için. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm sure it will be a great uh, day today because we will be talking about India. The greatest and the incredible India. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Ilya Gedik. Uh, today we are honored to have with us the Consul General of India to Turkey, Mr. Mirjito Vinic, and I am honored to invite him on stage to uh, give <laughs> his remarks. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Gerig University, for inviting me here today um, to uh, dear rector, Mr. Ahmed, and also to uh, the, uh, how, how can I put it, the incomparable Madam Hulia Gedik for her energy and enthusiasm and being such an inspiring figure for all of us. Uh, just to say that you're already inspiring our entire consulate. So thank you very much for putting India front and center in your agenda. Um, actually, after the presentation and after the speeches, I don't have anything much to say. <laughs> All my talking points have been covered. Um, but it's a pleasure to see you. Uh, yes, uh, I'm not uh, your standard, uh, maybe I'm not your standard average uh, Indian guy, and that's why India is so incredible. But I want to dwell a little bit about why India is incredible um, for those who have not visited my beautiful country. Um, not only is uh, India the large, seventh largest country by area, but it's also now the most populous with about 1.4 billion people. Um, and just to put that in perspective, what does that mean? It is uh, for about more than four times larger than Turkey in land area, with over almost 20, 20 times the population. Uh, there are four states in India that have a uh, population larger than Turkey, that is Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Bihar, and West Bengal. Thousands of language languages. Um, I I come from the the northeast part of India, which is uh, on the foothills of the Himalayas. I grew up speaking uh, three languages. My dad, my mom. We spoke English at home, but we also I went to Delhi to study, so I learned um, Hindi, and I can also understand Bengali and Assamese. So these are all every language. Every area has a different language. All Indians grew up eating different food and speaking different languages and just growing up in very different environments. Uh, but, the, but, the, but the unique thing is that if you, if you go to India, you will find that people are always able to live with each other. Uh, and because we are so different, we are yet you know, being able to 
think together, put our minds together, and maybe that's what makes India so different. Uh, therefore, my challenge to you is actually that if you want to understand India, you really need to travel to India. Uh, and I would encourage uh, our students here, please uh, put that in your agenda if you haven't gone to India already. Um, like I said, India is full of young people. The median age is 28 years old. Um, some, something like Turkey, where there are a lot of young people, and that, that's something that is common between us. Um, I don't want to dwell so much on the figures, but just to say, uh, just to quickly uh, say why, why India and Turkey? India is the, as you saw earlier in the presentation, is the fifth largest economy in the world, and it's one of the top fastest G20 countries, growing at over 7%. It has a young populace. It is also a gateway for uh, Turkey to connect with the rest of Asia, as uh, Madam Hulia Gedik covered it. It is a, India has a very broad outreach in its foreign policy and its outreach with many other countries in Asia, Africa, and across the Atlantic. Therefore, um, if, you, if we work together, we're able to connect with a, a much wider audience. Turkey is, of course, gifted with an irresistible geographic location, not just a good domestic market, but companies that are doing business can easily launch into Europe and into the wider region. Uh, there was a presentation that was given by uh, the Ministry of Trade last week uh, when the Indian delegation visited. And it shows that the market around uh, Turkey is more than 1.5 billion people uh, with just two hours by connect, uh, you know, two hours flight connectivity. So obviously that is the reason why there are a lot of big com Indian companies here. I don't know how many of you know, but as the presentation covered it, all the big companies have a presence here. Mahindra, Tata's, uh, Aditya Birla, uh, you know, Bajaj is making motorbikes. I mean, there are a lot of them here quietly doing business. And, you know, if, you, if I have spent time talking to them, they're here for the long run. They know that Turkey is important to expand into the wider region. So there are several new sectors where cooperation is possible. IT and IT services, health, digital public infrastructure, renewable energy, um, defense manufacturing, films and movies. Uh, I know uh, our dear friend Murtaza will be uh, pitching for this forever. Um, and I thank him for his energy as well. So I'll just wind up, but to, speak, to leave you with a key, few key points. Uh, you will hear this throughout the day, but um, India will be can be a very good partner and a strong long-term partner. Why? For the following reasons. Number one, India is reliable. India is reliable. India will be here for the long run. Uh, we have such a big population. We are uh, a fast-moving elephant now, and therefore we will be here. We will be reliable. Uh, our, our fundamentals are solid. Uh, Turkish and Indian people have great, um, a great culture, similar cultural sensibility which is very important to understand each other. That's why when you travel to India, you will find that Indians are just like you. So India is reliable. Number two, India will keep growing. The growth of India's middle class is one of the greatest uh, social transformations. Um, more and more people are able to afford more and more things. Uh, Madam Hulia talked about contrasts. Yeah, you find all con you'll find a big contrast in India. You have super rich people. You have people who are not, who are still still poor uh, in the below the poverty line. And yet, uh, more and more people are, our aspiration is to ensure that we need to grow at 7 8% every year so that more and more people come above the poverty line. And therefore, India will keep growing. More people will be coming above the poverty line. More people will be able to afford good things. And therefore, um, India will be a good growth partner. So India is reliable. India will keep growing. Number three, India has range. Uh, it's connected to the second point. India has the ability to expand and absorb all kinds of products, all kinds of, you know, you can't find a sector in India that, uh, that's a, that you know, okay, nobody's doing it or this will not fly. No, everything will fly, everything will work. Number four, India has skilled manpower. This comes up in regular conversations with uh, Turkish companies. Uh, Turkish companies uh, need skilled manpower and India is able to provide skilled manpower. 
uh, in in the I wouldn't say who, but in the words of uh, one of one uh, very important um, industry Turkish industrialist, he says India's engineers are the best bang for the buck. So, meaning that for for a good value for money, you get a well-educated, well-trained engineer who is able to go around the world with you and um, immerse himself or herself in different cultures. So there's definitely that space for people to people connect, for, in, for more Turkish students to go to India and be educated, and for more Indians to come here to be educated to work as well. So India has the skill manpower. Number five, I covered this point earlier, but India has opportunities for connection with other countries in Asia as much as Turkey provides connection with Europe and the wider region. So I'll just leave you with these few points. Um, it's such a privilege to be connected to Gedik University. Um, the consulate will, as I promised, will be involved with this uh, business summit every year. We're happy to support. Uh, I'm just throwing this idea that we can have an Indian corner in the library where we're happy to contribute books. Uh, and some of the books, we are awaiting a new stock. So we will try to contribute as much books and um, really try to use this university and this space as a knowledge uh, base for understanding more of India. And hopefully next year we'll be able to get much more speakers as well. Thank you very much. Well, we express our gratitude to Mr. Mihito Vinito. Now it is time to listen our keynote speakers. Today we are going to look at India in many different dimensions. Firstly, we will try to understand geopolitical and geostrategic role of India in the globe. Secondly, we will look at fundamentals and procedures of investment from a legal perspective. And we will closely look at two very important sectors, education and technology, through a shining example. Now I would like to invite Ms. Sibel Karabel, Istanbul Gedik University, Asian Strategic Studies and Research Center Director on stage, to talk about the role of India in the world and Asia-Pacific region. Presentation on the Honorable Chairperson of the Board of Trustees of Istanbul Gedik University, Honorable Your Excellency Consul General, Honorable my Rector, distinguished participants, I am Sibel Karabel, Head of Asian Center and Lecturer at Istanbul Gedik University, and I would like to ex express that it's a great pleasure for me to be in this uh, distinguished event in order to present my presentation, deliver my presentation entitled India's role in the Asia Pacific. So the question, and first of all, throughout this event, I firmly believe that, I, I totally agree with my esteemed rector that through this valuable exchange of information and expertise, we will gain further insights on the dynamics of the relationship and the cooperation, leave areas, venues of cooperation between Turkey and India. So uh, the question entails, where does India stand in the Asia Pacific to look upon dynamics of India's remarkable achievements, the factors behind India's remarkable achievements throughout the globe, and at the same time find out and explore some geopolitical and geoeconomic strategies along with India's rise. Uh, particularly for over the past two decades. So, first of all, before this, I would like to make a particular notice on the terminology between in the Pacific and the Asia Pacific on a very quick note. So, we may have noticed that for over particularly the last 10, the last decade, for over the la uh, last 10 years, the term as a geographic construct in the Pacific has gained prominence to a large extent. So there's an important distinction between in the Pacific and the Asia Pacific, and uh, with a 
relatively short span of time, I will try to summarize the main points. And in this place, both in and strategies, both with respect to in the Pacific and the Asia Pacific as well. So while we are talking about Indo-Pacific, we are uh, actually talking about two oceans, one being Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean as a single interconnected entity in geographic construct. So in fact, in 2007, it was solidified by the then Prime Minister, Japanese Prime Minister, Mr. Shinzo Abe, actually in New Delhi in 2007, while he was delivering a speech. So Mr. Abe, RIP, Mr. Abe was talking about his speech was titled Confluence of the Two Seas, where he was mentioning to see the region, as I said, as a single uh, interconnected, which corresponds to about 65% of the global GDP. So it's a very, very uh, remarkable asset in this sense. So actually, we might also emphasize the fact that this is not just about geopolitical or geographic construct. It has real time and real life consequences as well. So accordingly, the states and the countries and the regional and international organizations adapt their national and economic strategies along with and according to the NEV regional order. So we might say that by time, since 2007, more and more countries the United States in 2017, for example, has started to adopt the term in the Pacific in their official documents. So it's an evolving concept. By the way, I should mention that the concept has different meanings for the different countries. This is just an example. United States designates the region in different than Australia and India. We'll talk about India's proposition at distance. Mr. Modi, Prime Minister, Indian Prime Minister Mr. Modi, at the Shangri-La Dialogue, declared India's official stance uh, towards in the Pacific. So the main points, key points, is that he mentioned during his speech that the Indian Ocean is critical to India's future, where the ocean carries 90% of India's trade and energy resources. So we might also say that, add that, the construct of India is larger and broader than the United States and the Australia. And India sees the region in very tune with India's foreign policy priorities, particularly since 1991. Actually, we might say that there's a great line of continuity of foreign policy priorities of India since the independence in 1947. So India sees the region in terms of free and open in the Pacific under the international law. So after this, we might say that India, as I said, in line with India's foreign policy priorities, neighborhood first policy, act this policy, and the significance of in the Pacific in the foreign policy priorities has shifted to a higher rank. So uh, I would also like to add that in very line with India's foreign policy priorities, which bases on non-alignment and strategic autonomy and diversification of assets in not just economic assets, this is, uh, I am meaning, diversification of alliances as well. So as we all know that this year in the 2023, India hold the presidency of the G20 summit. And this is from this short video is from this official social media account of Prime, Mo Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, I would just like to share with you, if I can. Just a sec. I can't intervene in here. 
Videonun play'ine basabilir miyiz Koray Bey? Play tuşuna basabilir miyiz? <Gülüyor> ट्वेंटी के प्रेसिडेंट के तौर पर भारत पूरी दुनिया का आह्वान करता है कि हम मिलकर ग्लोबल ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट को एक विश्वास एक भरोसे में बदलें। जब वर्षों पुरानी चुनौतियां हमसे नए समाधान मांग रही है 21वीं सदी का यह समय पूरी दुनिया को नई दिशा दिखाने वाला और नई दिशा देने वाला एक महत्वपूर्ण समय है भारत की जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी इंक्लूजन का सबका साथ का प्रतीक बन गई है भारत में ये पीपल्स जी ट्वेंटी बन गए सो आई वुड लाइक टू एड दैट ऑल्सो द थीम फॉर द जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी इज रिमार्केबल एज वेल इन संस्कृत इज इट वसुद हाईवा कुटुम्बकम इट मीन्स दैट वन अर्थ वन फैमिली वन फ्यूचर एज ऑल्सो इट्स a very inclusive approach actually it is very remarkable in that sense as well so if we continue with the asia pacific as we are more accustomed than in the pacific we are seeing that we are weaving the region in the western pacific ocean which comprises uh, china southeast asia oceania and south asia so uh, we might also remind that the significance particularly economic significance of asia pacific region has not waned but actually sometimes the terms are used and adopted interchangeably sometimes the indo pacific is used instead of sometimes along with asia pacific but if we are talking about the region asia pacific so as i said the economic significance has not waned just some key uh, facts for example if we consider the demographic factors we see that the region just if we add up china the populations of china and india which corresponds to 2.8 billion people and we if we add also the population of asean which is about 650 million people and we and in the end we can see that the region in just in terms of population comprises about 65% of the global population so it's a huge asset in just in uh, demographic facts so if we proceed with economic some economic basic economic indicators we see that if we also evaluate the region's journey from the 2000 from the year 2000 to 2023 this year we see that the contribution of the region to the global gdp was about 27% in the year 2000 which corresponds to 9 trillion dollars and if we come to the end of 2021 we see that the region's percentage has risen by 10% and it has come to it has a, a, approximately 37% and which is equal to also 35 trillion dollars and in the in this uh, chart you can see that relatively the share of the eu and us is declining this is remarkable as esteemed elia gedik has mentioned the region the center of gravity in world economics not economy because 
uh, I'm a lecturer in the, uh, and I'm giving delivering lectures on international relations and political science, so I have a tendency to combine the issue, to relate the issue to, to geopolitics inherently. So this is not just in terms of economics. This has a significant meaning relating to the defining regional order, new order, order actually. So, uh, also to some predictions, this is uh, taken from SNP, but uh, you can refer to many different standards and me measures, but at the end of the day, they all tell the same story. Uh, by, two t by the year 2040, the share of Asia-Pacific region in, its, in relative to its contribution to the world GDP is predicted to amount to 42%. Also, you can see the other shares of the Western countries' contributions. So when we come to India, what is India's place in the Asia-Pacific in relation to our calculations? We can see that India has had a remarkable economic success. So uh, in the year, you can see the upward trend. In the year 2000, the GDP for, of India was about $270 billion. And I have recently checked while coming to this event, as of December, the GDP of India is about $2.73 trillion. With GDP growth rate is 7.6%, 7 which is very high compared to Western economies. So uh, also is India, there are different predictions. That there, as I said, there, there are different standards of measures. But uh, by the year 2031, uh, India is expected to lead one-fifth of global economic growth. This is also another significant aspect. So another uh, important indicator of the strength of the economy of a country, we can see that the foreign direct investment in a very short way, I will try to summarize, just to compare the two decades. In the year 2000, the foreign direct investments inflow to India, it was about $2.2 billion. And we, when we come to the year 2023, it is about $71 billion. So it is a very huge upward trend as well. So we can see, so we can also see that uh, in the year 2023, India was ranked in the 10th place in the uh, world's most uh, preferred destinations for foreign direct investments. So actually, we might summarize that, yes, there are a lot of governmental incentives since the liberalization uh, of economy since 1991, but a large consumer base and expanded in digital infrastructure, particularly, and growing incomes all contributed to this economic success. So the top five countries, Mauritius, US, Japan, Singapore, and Netherlands. And it's interesting, I would like to share with you that the services and technology sectors, they all uh, comprise one third of the uh, foreign direct investment inflows of Indian investments. So uh, I would like to conclude uh, my presentation uh, with a book, with an excerpt from a book, The India Way, uh, from the esteemed Minister of External Affairs of India, Mr. Jai Shankar. And I found it, I have read his book before, and I found uh, many interesting and remarkable keynotes regarding India. He's, uh, as we all know, he's a very experienced an esteemed, actually, uh, diplomat of India, representing India, and he has recently met with Anthony Blinken two days ago. So I would just like to just emphasize this point. In a such dynamic situation, creating a stable balance in Asia is India's foremost priority. So thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much for your enlightening speech, uh, Ms. Karabat. Our next speaker is a lawyer. Uh, Kurt and Partners law, law Firm partner, Ms. Özlem Kurt, is going to give her takes on fundamentals and procedures of investment from a legal perspective. Good morning. Can you hear me better now? Dear ladies and gentlemen, and dear students, uh, esteemed council and Ms. Gedik and uh, Mr. Rector uh, Kesik, uh, thank you for inviting me here today. It's been a really pleasure for me. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details of the legal stuff, but I would like to talk about with uh, legal perspective of the investment planning uh, in abroad, in either in any countries. But before that, uh, to be honest, I didn't expect to see uh, that much crowded, especially in the university, in a university. And I would like to thank you once again to uh, universities, uh, Ms. Uh, Kes Mr. Kesik and Ms. Gedik, and congratulate you guys because you are here um, as lawyer. I have many s students working with me for uh, for training reason, and I work with the junior lawyers, and they know law very well. But I realize that they don't know really about the real life. They don't know about the business perspective at all. So seeing you here is very important, not for us, but for you especially. That's why I congratulate you for this organizations uh, having us here in the university. Okay, let's start with talk about uh, business then. First of all, I personally had a, uh, have a very favorable opinion in India and Turkey cooperation because as lawyer, I've been uh, working with many Indian companies, uh, having a many good friendship uh, in years uh, with my Indian friends from uh, through the international works. So uh, I really believe in this cooperation due to similar roots of cultures, similar approach and uh, and maybe the future that we, we look at together. That's why, again, congratulate once again that this summit is very useful and I, I think the timing is also very good. Uh, once again, I congratulate on that. From the legal perspective, when we talk about why we should invest in Turkey, all esteemed speakers are explaining very well, and the other week also in Deik. Uh, by the way, hey, I, I, I'm really happy to see you also here. University and business environment and Deik is very good, very, very good combination. And the other week uh, also we listened very esteemed speakers talking about both countries, uh, explaining the why we should invest, uh, vice versa. But from the legal perspective, I just would like to underline that uh, Turkey is a very well established legal structure for the foreign investors. We have many adapt new adaptation in years that uh, it's very open to foreign investments. But additionally, I would like to underline that uh, at least last 10 or 15 years, Turkish judicial system has been changed and uh, almost more than 90% of the judicial system is adopted by EU law system. So it is very uh, open to international investments and legally safe. That's why it is very preferable. But when we invest in, a, in, a, a, in abroad, uh, not only in Turkey or India, from the general perspective, what sh uh, should investors do first? What they look at first from the legal perspective? For your business, for your good or services, what are you going to sell? What are you going to produce in a country? First of all, you have to look at the legal framework from that perspective. 
and also regulatory landscape is very, very important to discover first. It is the fundamental, it is the fundamental part of your business plan actually. I all the time mention that the companies, the investors, their main purpose is not being legal, but I mean, economical, commercial reasons is the core reason, but they have to be legal. And that's why a legal structure should be a part of initial business, sorry, initial business plan. That's why regulatory framework has to be checked in advance. Again, if the invest uh, target company, uh, target country, sorry, to invest, is if a legal environment is uh, investor friendly, foreign investor friendly, which I mentioned, Turkey is quite like that. And also for Turkey, I would like to underline that freedom of governing law and dispute resolution mechanism are very international, which is also very important. That means that you can choose the right law for your, for your operation in Turkey. Although you are based in Turkey, uh, you, can, uh, you can be binding by Turkish law for the local activities, but for your international activities, you are free to choose the law, governing law, and the venue for the possible lawsuits, which is very important to choose a country to invest. And the, the, uh, one of the other uh, important points to, within the investment plan is suitable corporate structure. Uh, in Turkey, the most common uh, company types are LLC and joint, I mean, limited liability company and joint stock company. We have some others not really pop popular. You can also have a branch or region office. But again, which one is suitable for you? In Turkey, you can, as a foreigner, without any Turkish resident or Turkish uh, shareholder, you can, uh, uh, you can operate a company called, uh, ah, I couldn't find a way to construct a company in Turkey with one shareholder which can be a foreigner. Either neutral person or legal person is possible. From that perspective, if you are going to have a cooperation, joint venture, or a partnership relationship with a local company in a country, then as a second point, in addition to corporate structure, shareholder structure is very important from legal perspective that we would like to look at. From the legal perspective, it should be well designed but not enough, especially for the complicated shareholder structure, for the international shareholder structure. Uh, in, at that point, we usually recommend to companies having a shareholder agreement in addition to article of association. Uh, there are many reasons to have this structure, but let me, uh, let me please uh, inform you on main two. One is Turkish law, uh, not allow us to write everything in article association regarding the company structure by law. That's why, in addition to article association, shareholder agreements would be very, very beneficial from the legal perspective that uh, you can well regulate. And the other reason, the most important reason for international companies is that confidentiality. Because articles of associations are public, you can easily reach them through the trade registry's website. But shareholders' agreements are confidential. That's why for the complicated structures uh, among the shareholders, uh, through international investment especially, having a shareholder agreement with the confidentiality regulation is very important and in favorable of the company to be established. From the legal perspective, again, the, uh, structuring the management is very important. Joint stock company and the limited liability companies having a different rules on that, of course. But uh, at least I would like, let me uh, remind you about some stuff that um, individuals or legal entities would be a shareholder in both companies. Legal entity becomes a partner 
in joint stock company, it is necessary to, but on this point, it is necessary to appoint a resident individual representative if it's a, a legal entity. The board member does, I mean, this is also very important for the investment perspective. Uh, the board member does not have to be physically present in Turkey. Therefore, resident permit or work permit is not a lot, uh, required. When we talk about limited liability companies, at least one partner must be the director of the company, which is very important, because if this is the case, then if the director will be a foreigner, then we will talk about the work and residence, residence permit for that uh, director to be resident in Turkey. Why I'm underlining the work and residence permit? Because there is a, they uh, colleagues will know very uh, more than me actually probably from that perspective. Getting a work permit is not really easy for the foreigners, not only in Turkey, all over the world, and which is very understandable, uh, especially these days. The uh, immigration situation is. Uh, affecting this procedure and getting it longer. That's why uh, the structuring from the work permit requirement is very important. But if we are talking about key personnel for the company, like director, like one of the management uh, staff, then we may have some uh, easy way to get work permit because in normal conditions we have a, a one foreigner workers, we need to have at least five Turkish workers in the company uh, you are established in Turkey. That's why if it's a key personnel, then we can avoid this rule and can be easily get a work permit. I'm not going to bore you with this establishment procedure, but I mentioned about the article, importance of article of association and importance of uh, not compulsory but shareholders agreement. But all this stuff, uh, all the details and procedures should be planned in advance. I've been advising to many foreigner companies who's invested already in Turkey, but uh, from the practice, I see that they usually see it, investment in just establishing a company and plan the rest of later on, which is quite wrong, to be honest, because establishment of the company, I think it is quite the end of the road, because including all the steps that I uh, uh, mentioned, and also including the employment uh, structuring should be planned in advance. Otherwise, leg uh, without legally uh, frame this plan, if you start establishing the company, we see that this is really expensive from the cost and timing perspective to correct the uh, initial wrong steps. That's why we really recommend to plan uh, legal steps in advance. Before finishing, uh, let me share my ideas about not only investment perspective, but from the legal service general perspective that le um, although legal service is deemed quite a conservative, a traditional service, but the time is changed for everything, also for legal services. Legal services should be multidisciplinary. Uh, and from the beginning stage, you have to look at from the holistic perspective, including the different disciplinaries. For example, when we talk about employment law in Turkey, on employment compliance, you should also consider the digitalization of your company, the data protection of your company, as well as your employees' data. Therefore, uh, from different disciplines, we have to frame your legal plan according to your targets of your company 
in a country where you invest? What is your purpose in this country? Operate, produce, and sell to those countries, to, to these countries or those countries around that country. Or if you are a startup in a country, what is your purpose? In a couple of years, you are planning to exit. You are going to, going to get a fund, international funds, whatever it is your plan. But it, we, from the legal perspective, we have to see it beforehand to provide you protective legal route during your company's life cycle. If you realize that the theme of my presentation is an orchestra, there are singers and instruments. The reason is that slide that I was going to put. If you are invest in a country, this is like operating an orchestra because from the from business, from legal and the other mini perspective, you have to evaluate the if the decision is right, how the procedure should be, and go on. So each step is a, is a single instrument, but you need a very good uh, and listenable music in a short and long period. That's why you need a chef, you need a, a conductor to operate this orchestra in a foreign country, you don't really get to know the culture from the day one. That's why, from my experience, maybe I'm a lawyer, that's why I am saying, but uh, the, this conductor should be lawyer or should be in the team of conductor. Because in today's days, in the digitalized and uh, globalized world, uh, risk and opportunities is the, the most important part of our businesses. And the lawyer's role is to uh, determine the risk and eliminate the risk for your company. That's why the conductor or the team of conductor should have lawyers, definitely. And from Kurtan Partners, we look at the businesses, we look at the investments plan from that perspective and try to cover all the areas of law, we are not only four, we are more than 20, but for the leaders of the partners of the firm, uh, the holistic approach should be crucial for internationalized uh, investments or all businesses. And thank you for listening to me. I hope I, I, hope I didn't really bore you with the legal stuff, but thank you for your patience. Thank you so much. Uh, well, after the legal issues and investment, we are going to look at two uh, very critical sectors in uh, Turkey and India uh, bilateral trade, which are education and technology. So, our next speaker is Associated Professor Dr. Haydar Shahin. He is the uh, Istanbul Gedik University Deputy Head of Mechatronics Engineering, and Mr. Shahin is going to tell us how technology and education sectors are important in bilateral trade and give a very uh, good example uh, of uh, uh, cooperation in between uh, THAP and uh, Gedik University. Thank you. Hi, uh, dear honorable uh, board of trustees, general counsel and rector, and uh, to, in today's uh, presentation, we'll talk about uh, technology and education, how to collaborate on startups. Uh, what do we do as Istanbul Gedik University? This is the topic we'll discuss in today's uh, presentation. Istanbul Gedik University in the industry 
Istanbul Gedik University and India, uh, and Istanbul Gedik University and TIHAP, and IMAP program inviting entrepreneurs, startups to India, Turkey, and India, TTO. Uh, what do we do as Istanbul Gedik University? Uh, here are, we have faculties, uh, six faculties, 34 laboratories, two vocational schools, one graduate school of education, uh, one school of uh, foreign languages, and we have also 21 application and research centers, technology transfer office, Istanbul Gedik University's new company, Gedik Test Center. Uh, we have a program called uh, also Campus in the Industry, courses for the academic year like uh, in 2023 and 2024. We have a, a Istanbul uh, lectures here and also in Cube incubation uh, center uh, activities. We also have uh, organized industrial region and IT Valley, Valley uh, uh, le lectures here. We continue our journey with the aim of raising individuals who are ready for business life, produce innovative ideas, and have an entrepreneur uh, spirit uh, uh, with the campus approach in the sector. Uh, Istanbul Gedik University's new company called uh, Gedik Test Center, we have here, uh, industrial services, training in certification services, uh, and also we have uh, education certification and industrial services. We are accredited by uh, Türkart MYK, the Ministry of Industry and Technology, and Bureau uh, Veritas as third party organizations. University and India, the world's largest incubation and innovation center, which has 2,000 plus startups that will be uh, working with T-Works, also India's prototyping center. Uh, T-Hub basically has a corporate network which has a, a great companies, like you see here, uh, many companies, which we plan on integrating with these uh, companies and also international network that our goal here is uh, to get into uh, with, uh, with this network. And in Istanbul, Gedik University and TIHAB, uh, Gedik holding substantial business experiences spanning over 60 years coupled with the innovative outlook uh, of Istanbul Gedik University, supported by high-quality education, provides fertile ground for generating future-oriented visions. In that respect, Istanbul Gedik University and TIHAB signed a memorandum of understanding in April 2023 with the specific aim of developing business, academic, and educational cooperation between the two in institutions. Uh, as uh, cooperation with TIHAB, as Istanbul Gedik University, we first visited TIHAB in April and then hosted the TIHAB team and CEO in uh, Istanbul in August. We visited incubation centers and technology parks in Istanbul. Uh, Meanwhile, Istanbul Gedik University and TIHAB, following the visit to Istanbul Gedik University, we conducted routine online meetings with our esteemed Consul uh, General Orhan Yalman Okan, valuable TTO members, and uh, TIHAB executive. Here we have IMAP, uh, a TIHAB program, India Market Access Program. We have T-Bridge and about IMAP programs. Let me explain this a little bit. Here, T-Bridge, T-Bridge is a T-Hub's international program that aims to build bridges for entrepreneurs to scale 
Internationally, programs under TBRIDGE target Indian startups ready to go global and international startups looking for support entering Indian and South Asian markets. About IMF here, T-Bridge is a T-Hub's international program that aims to build bridges for entrepreneurs to scale internationally. Programs under T-Bridge target Indian startups ready to go global and international startups looking for support entering Indian and South Asian markets. The Accelerator Light program starts with virtual interactions with the help of mentors and corporate representatives. It communicates into an intensive India sprint, sprint that is all about localization through business model validation, innovation, piloting, and closing deals okay. with the Indian ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, as Istanbul Gedik University in January, we will issue an open call through the T-Hub within the framework of IMAP program, inviting entrepreneurs, startups in Turkey to channel their ventures and ideas toward the East Asian market, facilitating their globalization and growth. We take pride in directing our entrepreneurs to T-Hub, contributing to the building of the technology bridge, concept for both Turkey and our industry. Shape the future with Istanbul Gedik University. Now, uh, Istanbul Gedik University and T-Hub, here, uh, alongside the IMAP program, through the virtual space, within T-Hub, we will actively engage in the ecosystem, both within T-Hub and across India. Virtual space membership is a membership granted to Istanbul Gedik University by T-Hub, and like the IMAP program, is one of the ties established to continue the cooperation between T-Hub and our university. Some of the opportunities provided by virtual space are as follows. To be informed about current developments within T-Hub, benefiting from the opportunities of the world's largest innovation center. To have knowledge about technology, entrepreneurship, and innovative formations in both Hyderabad and India. Staying in touch with other India-based startups, entrepreneurs, and investors in the business world through T-Hub. Likewise, as Istanbul Gedik University, thanks to our virtual space membership, we can use this membership as a bridge for all kinds of new developments related to entrepreneurship, both at our university and throughout Turkey, and establish a communication network in India, facilitating access and networking between Turkish startups and Indian startups. And uh, Turkey and India TTO, with the co contributions of our esteemed consulate general Orhan Yalman Okan and Istanbul Gedik University's proposal, we aim to facilitate this establishment of a joint Turkey, India, TTO, and establish a technology bridge in the near future, we are building a bridge to East Asia. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Haydar Shahin. So normally we had a little coffee break, but we started late, so we skipped that coffee break uh, and continue with our panel. Uh, our panel's name is Improving Bilateral, Bilateral Trade, and we're going to talk on the opportunities and the risks uh, of uh, doing trade with good examples. I myself will be moderating the panel, and uh, if you let me, uh, Please, my friends, join me to set uh, the panel 
uh, here. And uh, our panelists, meanwhile, I can uh, talk about a little. Uh, we're going to have uh, Mr. Murtaza Kalender. Uh, he's the founder and CEO of Travel Shop. Travel Shop is a fantastic company doing fantastic business in India and also with different other countries. They're doing Indian weddings here in Turkey. They're uh, bringing uh, some very uh, qualified Indian groups, uh, groups of business people uh, and uh, tourists. And we're going to have Mr. Onur Azdan. Uh, he's here as well. He's the founder of GCL. His business is also very unique. He's doing recycling and refining. Uh, he's collecting electronic uh, waste and uh, selling them uh, to all around the world. Uh, he's doing business in India and also uh, some other countries, including Bangladesh. And we have uh, Mr. Sarat Yakar. Uh, he's uh, the board member of Kedik Welding and uh, export manager. Uh, as Ms. Hulia Gedik mentioned, uh, we recently invested, uh, as Gedik Holding invested in India and doing business uh, as Gedik Asia there. So he's going to talk about what Gedik is exactly doing in India. And also we're going to have Ms. Janan Çelebioğlu. Uh, she's the vice uh, uh, chair of uh, Çelebi Holding. Uh, I don't know as if you guys, uh, our students are... Uh, aware of what Chelebi is doing. Chelebi is one of the greatest uh, uh, companies uh, and uh, investors uh, of uh, India from Turkey. Uh, unfortunately, she is not with us. She'll be connecting with, uh, uh, with an electronic line, uh, with Zoom. Um, uh, I'm looking for my friends. Are you coming to do the setup? Yes, these are our panelists, and we're going to start shortly. Uh, uh, and I'm going to invite my panelists here, and we're going to talk about what exactly they are doing in India, uh, their business, and also uh, what kind of opportunities they see for the future, and while they are doing business, uh, what kind of risks they face. So in a couple of minutes, uh, my friends are going to come and... Uh, Evet, setup için geliyor mu arkadaşlarım acaba? Evet. Normalde kahve aramız vardı, orada yapacaktık ama onu geçince biraz sıkıntı oldu. Şimdi hemen arkadaşlarım e, hallediyorlar. E, kusurumuza bakmayın. Evet, bir de Türkçe söyleyeyim. E, panelimizde... E, ikili ticaretin geliştirilmesine yönelik ne gibi fırsatlar ve riskler olduğunu konuşuyor olacağız. Çok kıymetli iş insanları bizimle birlikte olacaklar ve oralarda yaptıkları işleri bize anlatacaklar. Özellikle genç arkadaşlarım sizin için bunlar birer örnek. Yarın bir gün böylesi şirketlerde çalışabilir ya da kendi şirketinizi kurarak böylesi girişimler yapabilirsiniz. Sizler için güzel örnekler olacak diye düşünüyorum. Hindistan özelinde konuşuyoruz bugün ama tüm diğer ülkelerde iş yapabilmek adına bu örnekler son derece önemli. Evet bu vesileyle hazır en azından sandalyelerimiz gelmişken değerli panelistlerimi sahneye davet etmek isterim. Okay now I'm going to invite our panelists on stage. Dear guests, uh, my first panelist is uh, Mr. Murtaza Kalendar. As I told you, he's the founder and CEO of Travel Shop. Thank you for being with us, Murtaza Bey. And I'm going to invite next Mr. Onur Özden. He's the founder of uh, GCL, Recycling and Refining. And thirdly, I'm going to invite Mr. Serhat Yakar. He is the board member of Gedik Welding and uh, our export manager. He's coming. And shortly, we're going to have Mr. Can Ancelebioğlu on the screen.
We have panelists from three different industries, tourism, uh, metal, and uh, what can I say, recycling. That's another huge industry. I'm going to do two rounds. In first round, we're going to know uh, our panelists, uh, their businesses, and uh, on the second part, we're going to talk about uh, the future, uh, what kind of uh, opportunities uh, we can have. <laughs> I think we are ready, but my, my mic is not open. Is it open? Okay. We only have Murtaza here. Yeah, <laughs> <And> usually. <laughs> He's a very colorful person. Uh, would you mind opening our microphones? Mikrofonlarımızı açabilir miyiz? Açıldı, tamam, süper. Okay, let's start with Murtaza Kalendar. What exactly Travel Shop is doing, uh, dear Murtaza Bey? Can you tell us about your India business? Of course. Before I start, may I ask a question to our young generation? Of course. Okay, so they may change their mind about India or they may change their opinion about India. Okay, let me ask. First of all, Namaste. Abkese ho, sir. Okay. Uh, let me ask English. Eh? Anybody has been to India? Put your hands up. No one been to India. Okay, anybody wants to go to India? Nobody, oh, very few. Kim India, mm. Put your hands up, please. How many people want to go to India? Okay, I'm sure you will change your mind soon. Okay. And anybody is doing the business with India? Only one young man. <laughs> of course, they are Indian. <laughs> okay. And uh, how many people want to do business with India? How many? Ooh. Nobody. Not many, okay. Not many. How many people watch Indian movie? Many. many. Not many, <laughs> okay. I highly recommend one Indian movie, India in a three Iliad. Watch and you feel India, okay. And uh, later on I will ask the same question to them. My name is Murtada Kalander. I'm a founder of the Travel Shop Turkey. And since 2006 I'm in Indian market. We bring a lot of Indian mice groups, weddings, and uh, incentive, leisure groups. Now I feel like I'm Indian, okay? Because the India is one of the big market, and uh, how do you call? Uh, so many people traveling to all around the world. I believe 2025, 20, more than 50 million people will travel to uh, outside to India. And especially the young generation is like a diamond, and they are happy to travel. And almost one month back, we host the influencers, and the uh, average is the one people watching per real videos. So I have a lot of say to uh, say about India. Uh, maybe after my turn back, then I will give how to do business in India because. I always say to all my colleagues, India like an ATM. It's full of money there, but you need to get it. But I will tell the passport my next turn. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalender. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, that later. And let's continue with Honor Özden. Uh, what exactly you are doing in India, uh, Mr. Özden? And can you tell about your business? Uh, Okay, uh, is my voice clear? Yeah. Uh, my company's name is GCL. It's a uh, refining and recycling company. Uh, we do electronic recycling. Uh, we cover, oh, hold on. Uh, we cover all South Asia and African countries. Uh, I am operating in 15 different countries. Uh, in India, uh, mainly, I am active in uh, West Bengal. Uh, because it's uh, close to East Bengal, which is Bangladesh, and they are sharing the same language. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about uh, 
my feeling of India and uh, how I started my business and uh, what are the negativities and positivities to start a business from scratch in India. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I always go through negativities. Uh, India is a different place. Uh, when you first go there, uh, when you just talk to Indian people trying to understand, uh, your first question is, uh, what kind of country is that? Uh, my understanding of it, India is not a country. It's a confederation of countries, and uh, it has different countries inside. So if you operate in different areas of India, you will have different legislations, different licensing laws, and uh, different people attitudes towards life. Uh, because of that, you have to be extremely careful about that. Because if you are not careful, it will be literally an incredible country. So <laughs> it will be difficult for you to do business. Uh, uh, Turkish people uh, do lots of business in India. Because it's not ad advertised well uh, in the world. We don't know this. But when you go there, you see lots of Turkish people. And when you start your business, you understand that there are lots of Indian companies doing business in Turkey as well. Lots of household names, the brands that we use, uh, they are belonging to Indian companies now. For example, uh, last meeting of ours, I met the guy from Hobby. I was shocked because they are quite big and probably all the students use uh, Hobby Jole in their life. Probably they do, I don't, but, <laughs> but probably you do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so uh, I was shocked really because I wasn't knowing about that. So I had a little chat with the guy and he was explaining to me the uh, scope of their business and how they do it. And I was just telling him about scope of my business in there, how I do it. Okay, for example, let's say, let's uh, think about the, uh, a city that I'm active in called Calcutta. Calcutta is one of the uh, first capitals of uh, British Raj, so it's a huge place. Uh, but, but for example, the, in my uh, refining business, which contains electronics refining, uh, the logistics is uh, really problematic in there. Uh, this is something that uh, we have to work on. Uh, and the, the travel, the, the uh, other problems are like, legislative problems mm -hmm. that uh, we can't like mix them with Turkish legislation. So if you just transport something from here to there, we are having like huge waiting times in customs, which is something that we have to work on. And the other problem problems are, uh, for example, if you are just doing business with different state of India, if you have licensing from the one state, it's not necessarily the same licensing with the other state. So you have to be careful about that as well. Uh, the positive points, uh, Indian people are unbelievable. They are, uh, wherever you go in India, you feel the hunger. People are hungry. They want to do business. They want to do something with you. And they want to offer you something that you can, money out of, you can make money out. So this is an extremely positive attitude. Uh, and also, when you go in, you understand the, the, the point that in India, there are kind of people that can make trade from the ex animosities, because they, they are making, they are doing trade with every kind of country, even they were in war or they were in uh, problems before. So they are trade people, even ne uh, necessarily they are not friends with these companies, but they trade with these companies. They are the master of it. So you have to be really, really uh, feeling good about this. So if you want to do business, they will do business with you. So they will ride the horse. So you, you have to be careful, you have to be really understanding this. Uh, and also, uh, there is one thing that I was seeing about in there. I'm just uh, taking it a bit long, sorry about that, but I have to tell this. Uh, in all the subcontinent, there's a problem of uh, meat income trap, which is economically, they can't just get out of a uh, certain amount of earning and certain amount of business, and they are trapped on that. It's a meat income economic trap. But India is not in that. I India is uh, investing so nicely, uh, state-wise, in the sectors that are important to the world. Uh, at the moment, uh, they are, I think, uh, they will be the ruling powers of the world in a couple of years' time. And because of that, I am always feeling that uh, other uh, powerful nations uh, who are the, having the reserve currencies, they are trying to stop this, uh, this, uh, this improvement, I think. And a tiny, a tiny note as well uh, about reserve currency situation of the world. 
India having huge problems about that because India's trade opportunities are huge. What they do is uh, they are trying to get the, the, the trade uh, the, in their own currencies and they try to make bilateral agreements with countries uh, to use rupee all, all the way around. Uh, at the moment, it's really difficult because the reserve currency system of the world is based on euros and uh, dollars, which are not causing inflation in, their co in the countries that they are printing of. But uh, if, the if the other currencies are used, because of the printing huge amount of them, it will cause inflation to the world. But uh, we, we, have to, we have to not forget that uh, if lots of countries, uh, they're going to bilateral trades mm -hmm. about use with using their own currencies, I think this, inf uh, this influence of West will shift to the influence of East. Also last year, uh, all the uh, subcontinent countries, they, they had the growth of 7 to 8 percent, which is huge at the moment. If you can see that Turkey is growing like a four and a half, five percent, and Europe is not even growing at all. So because of that, I think it's really important point that we have to just uh, bear in mind. Uh, so uh, if you like, I can just pass, pass the word to Serhat, and after that I can just uh, go. Well, if you want to continue, you can, because we are going to have uh, <laughs> yeah. Ms. Janan Çelebolu in two minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cut uh, Sarah's words, so you can add yeah, a couple okay. of words yeah. in uh, for the uh, two uh, minutes. So uh, if I come back to my own uh, business, uh, what I do is I collect uh, electronic waste in India. Uh, uh, I just go to uh, companies. Uh, I uh, collect in massive amounts their, uh, uh, their uh, old, uh, their used electronic material. I am uh, then I am just uh, hiring a uh, separation area, and in there I'm just uh, taking them into into small parts, and I send them to refineries. Okay, uh, technically is the, is the business uh, good for the world because it's a green business. Uh, I mean it can be marketed like that, uh, but uh, I prefer marketing it as a. Uh, making money out of metals. Uh, so what I do is like I'm just uh, making the uh, uh, metals that I'm generating from the waste into uh, metal bars and trying to sell them and try, trying to wire them to Europe. Uh, because uh, if you use certain refineries, you are having uh, those kind of bars which are wireable. So it's like money. So if you are just having like bars of rhodium, you can wire them from, from uh, let's say, from New Delhi to London easily. So because they are like certified, they are like money, they are like dollar, nothing different. Uh, so I'm just trying to do that in India. And India is in themselves, they are, they are quite huge about it actually. They are they having their own refineries, they are having their own companies for recycling. Uh, and uh, they are really having like a view about the green economy uh, because they, they, they know that they can generate huge cash from this as well. Mm. Uh, in India to me, is, is, it can be home to lots of different Turkish companies. Uh, if uh, Turkish uh, business people uh, want to go to India, there are certain ways in Turkey. For example, there are like organizations like DAIC that I am a member of as well, and there are other organizations uh, that you can just uh, join and uh, try to follow as well, which are really important for the bilateral trades. Uh, and thirdly, and which, which is the most important to me, is you don't, you don't have to be get scared. Because when you go to India, you understand that, that Indians, they are not scared at all. They are not scared at all about anything. Because when I just, for example, when my friend uh, Murtaza told how many people went to India, of course I know that we have economics, we have like issues, students, we don't have money, something like that. But traveling is a huge opportunity in India. And uh, getting visa is relatively easy. And the, if you don't go there, you won't learn it. So as, a, uh, as an older person uh, to you, my advice will be do whatever you can <laughs> do. For example, don't buy an iPhone, but go to India. So because it, <laughs> believe me that you will learn a lot and uh, you will just experience a lot. And believe me, it's not that expensive at all because they, they can offer anything for anybody and it's not scary at all as well. So you can understand that you can have good time in there as well. So, uh, that's what I will say about okay. India. Yeah. Don't buy a mobile phone or don't, uh, a don't smartphone, buy an iPhone. Don't buy an iPhone, go to one, expensive one, let's yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course, buy a phone, <laughs> but go to India. Yeah. And uh, today, uh, two of our students will earn a ticket to India. That's oh, great. <laughs> yeah, that will be a very nice experience. Meanwhile, they are in India. Uh, they're going to go to Delhi and also Hyderabad as we visit it and they're going to see 
T-Hub, uh, Istanbul Gaelic University's uh, collaborate uh, and experience there too. So I think Ms. Uh, Çelebi is, uh, should be ready. Canan Hanım hazır uh, uh, diyebiliyorum. Uh, alabilirsek kendisini ekrana. Uh, we can continue with her. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she is not with us. Uh, she's a very busy uh, working uh, person. So uh, she'll be with us online. And after her, we're going to uh, continue with uh, Mr. Serhat Yakar as well, uh, what Gedik is doing. So, hazır mı acaba? Canan Hanım, sesiniz gelmiyor. <gülüyor> Sizi görebiliyoruz ama sesinizi alamıyoruz. Mikrofonunuz kapalı. Evet, şimdi açıldı zannediyorum. Duyamıyoruz. Bizden mi kaynaklanıyor? <gülüyor> ee, Canan Hanım is on the way uh, through a meeting. Uh, so uh... <gülüyor> Now we are hearing you, I guess. I guess. Okay, okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes, yes, yes, yes, yes, yes, yes, yes, yes, perfect. <laughs> There is an acoustic coming to uh, my side. I don't know what's the reason. But when you talk, there is a big acoustic coming in. I don't know whether it is... Uh, uh, no, still, still, still continue. continue. Okay, I'm just going to uh, tell my question and uh, uh, be quiet. You want to uh, learn what you exactly do in India, and could you tell us the uh, opportunities and risks that you see in the Indian market, please? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me for this occasion. I think we are mostly with the uh, students in the university, right? Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, uh, we have been in India actually since 2009, but uh, with India uh, from 2005. So it took us almost four years to start a business because also our business is a little bit different than maybe any other business. Uh, we need to have a, a actually um, airport uh, uh, permission to be able to serve at the airports and uh, that uh, actually uh, area is always linked to the uh, also uh, with some bidding uh, procedure and because uh, India also uh, uh, having a high security issue more than any other countries also uh, at the airport so it was a big challenge for the foreign company to be able to Uh, get a permission in uh, India uh, for air airport services. So we, uh, when I say airport services, actually we are doing grant handling business as well as uh, uh, in Turkey and some cargo business. Uh, so what we do actually, uh, we do a, every type of services uh, the airline needs at the airport, uh, like, uh, you know, ramp services, the baggage services, and some passenger handling services. And you see many different type of equipment around the aircraft. So we do provide all those necessary equipment to be able to load, offload the aircraft and also passenger. And uh, anyway, So we started in 2009 with uh, Mumbai Airport. At the moment, uh, we are uh, uh, in India with uh, eight uh, actually destination. Uh, so uh, it means we are uh, there almost right now uh, uh, 15 years. Uh, so uh, 
the things in India was, of course, uh, not easy, but I cannot say it was much more difficult than Turkey because uh, we had the similar, actually, process uh, and, the, the, you know, uh, things in Turkey in the uh, old times. The only thing, it was the time difference, uh, how the things were developing. Uh, but at the moment, uh, what I can say, uh, in these 15 years, India developed a lot uh, about also their bureaucracy, their procedures, and uh, any type of actually permission, and also uh, uh, what they provide right now, that the foreign uh, companies can even at the airports uh, be 100% owned by the foreigner, which was not the case when we first uh, entered the market. So uh, it is definitely uh, opening up more and more uh, every day. And uh, the time seems to be long for you, maybe, but it was uh, not that much long because especially... Okay, I think... Because, because she is on the way, I think there is a connection problem. The thing is, it is quite important to have Ms. Canan Çelebioğlu with us because Çelebi Holding, as she mentioned, being there in India for the last 15 years and they're doing huge uh, uh, business there and uh, they quite uh, know very well of the opportunities. Uh, she said, yes, now we can see her. Without a voice, can you turn on your uh, microphone? Mm. Miss. Hm. Now it's okay. Sesiniz gelmiyor hala. Duyamıyoruz ama. Ve de göremiyoruz sizi. <gülüyor> Şimdi... yes, e, telefondan konuşmaya çalıştığım için mikrofona yaklaşmaya çalışıyorum. Ama e, bir şekilde şu anda duyamıyor musunuz beni? Yok yok şimdi iyi iyi iyi iyi. iyi, iyi. Okay. E, so uh, at the moment we are uh, as I told you at the beginning we are at the eight station in India eight different uh, destination cities and we have almost uh, at the moment uh, about 10,000 people working for us in India so it is uh, actually coming uh, more than uh, what we are having uh, as a uh, you know Celebi in Turkey. So uh, uh, what I can say about India for business wise, I think um, uh, still there is some uh, issues for the finance part, uh, but other than the finance issues. I think uh, most of the uh, uh, sectors in India at the moment is Hello. <laughs> Hello. Şimdi tamam tamam tamam Okay, uh, so most of the sectors at the moment, uh, it is allowed to have 100% ownership. This is very important for the business people, especially for the invest uh, uh, to, to companies who like to invest, because definitely you like to be able to control the business. Uh, and this is only possible, of course, after having 51%, or sometimes it is not easy to find the right partner. So if you are allowed to have a 100% ownership, 
This will uh, give, uh, of course, the foreign investor much more possibility to invest. So, other than that, uh, what I can say, actually, in India, uh, I think uh, one is uh, more uh, important, I mean, let me say, much better than China, that the people uh, who is able to work even in the, you know, blue color level, they have the English, uh, you know, capability, which actually I think helps a lot again uh, to the foreign investor in the country, because uh, this is not always, uh, of course, a chance for the, you know, any companies uh, who goes to the different countries to be able to communicate with the people. Of course, human resource side, uh, as we know, it is a big population country, but as well as they have really uh, uh, good quality, eligible people to be able to find in the different uh, department and different field, which is, a, of course, important element for the uh, working, actually, uh, area. Uh, to be a, just, a, uh, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, be a worker in the country if you are not Indian, that's not very easy. Uh, of course, if you uh, if you can find the company to be able to work, it is possible to get a working permit and to be able to work there. But it is a long, uh, very long term process. But it is not, uh, I think, maybe uh, uh, like that in the different countries uh, that uh, the foreigner cannot easily be work. But at the, at the moment, I think uh, it is very uh, limited uh, anyhow because the country itself has a lot of uh, human resource capability. Uh, the people generally, I believe, are very friendly and welcoming. So uh, especially being Turkish person in India, I think it is always a plus because uh, actually people are generally uh, welcoming you uh, as a foreigner, but if they learn that you are Turkish, they have uh, always a you know, a plus uh, uh, expect, uh, exception. So uh, I think uh, uh, for you uh, young people, uh, it is really a country uh, you need to see because it is developing very fast. I mean, the, uh, as a city, just as a tourist even, you can see the big changes, I think, every uh, five years if you go to different cities. And it is generally uh, in the positive way. I cannot say always uh, development is giving a positive you know, uh, feedback to the country, but uh, for India, it is really... Uh, in, in positive ways. Uh, uh, cultural wise, uh, very, very, very positive because uh, our culture and Indian culture uh, has a lot of common uh, actually aspects. So you won't feel uh, that much uh, foreigner in that respect. Of course, religion wise, it is big variety. Uh, but still, uh, their religion also uh, very much human-based, positive religion. That's why you wouldn't feel that much foreigner in the country. Thank you Thank so you much. So. Thank you uh, as well. I have to park right now. Uh, so uh, hope to uh, a big, uh, I think, success to your, um, you know, education and. Hopefully, you will be able to go and see India one day, uh, any of you. Thank you so Thank you. much, Ms. Telebol. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, the we was not very good, but the, the words are quite important. So I hope uh, everyone uh, could have a chance to listen what exactly she is saying. So we continue with Mr. Sarhat Yakar. He is the board member of Gedik Welding and uh, export manager. So Gedik recently invested in India. What exactly uh, Gedik Welding uh, and other Gedik companies are doing in India? Can you tell, about, tell us sure, about Sure. Thank you so much for the kind invitation. Appreciate that. Good morning. Namaste. Uh, Günaydın. 
Gedik Welding, uh, most of you know, very briefly exporting um, its products to 104 countries at the moment. We just celebrated our 60th year this year, uh, very important, very crucial um, uh, year for us. Um, uh, part of Gedik Holding also has um, uh, industry groups in casting and also valve production. Um, buying India, uh, pretty much every Turkish company is doing at the moment. Uh, we also do. We have been buying raw materials and semi-finished products for the last uh, 20 years. That's a good thing. Good quality, um, good delivery terms, uh, aggressive pricing. But the, the, the, the better thing that we do, that we also sell to India. We export our products to India. Actually, today, I just checked with our operation team. We're loading one full container of products to India, 20 tons, 22 tons, uh, how lucky we are. Um, so we buy and sell. Uh, we have this mutual business ag uh, trade uh, agreement, uh, trade business with India. So basically, which is uh, putting us in a unique position. Um, so we started the market in 2023. Uh, we know how big the Indian market is, but the potentials are, the, the possibilities are. And we did the market study. Uh, we have a team on the ground. We have regional office in uh, New Delhi. Uh, as said, we have very um, attached to the uh, export business, Gedik uh, Holding Group. Uh, we have one um, office in Serbia, in Balkan territory. We have one uh, office and manufacturing facility in Azerbaijan. Uh, we have one regional office in UAE, and we have an office in India. In Azerbaijan, we started to produce, so hopefully in 2024, India is going to be the, our second center for production. Uh, we did our market survey. We had uh, a lot of meetings with the potential customers, uh, with investors. So in 2024, 20, 20, 20, we're ready for investment. We actually already produce our machinery. The machinery is also set. So um, you know, with our next visit, hopefully we will be a local producer in the local Indian uh, market. Okay, we will talk on what uh, is Gedik planning for the future in the Asian and especially in the Indian market. So, uh, dear Murtaza, you told us that uh, India is, a, is an ATM, but you need the password to use the card. So what is the password? Of course. <laughs> First of all, you know, I like to mention a very important media. Please don't believe the bad media, because the, when I'm traveling to India, everybody show me the, you know, your people cooking the straight food, you know, blah blah blah. But they show only the bad part. Yeah. Uh, I before I went to India, I studied in America when I was your age, guys. You know, 20, 20, 24, 25. My boss was from India. He told me, Murti, why don't you go to India? I said, India? Yes. He told me, if you want to be a quick millionaire, if you want to be a quick businessman, you know, if you want to more profit, then go to India. And come back, I came back to Turkey in uh, uh, 2003, then in 2005, I opened my own company. I went to India in 2006. By that time, India is not the real developed country, you know. You cannot see so many restaurants, coffees, bar, you know. And I lost six, seven kilos by that time. Uh, I'm not blaming the country, but I don't have enough money to spend for myself too, okay? Uh, by that time, I saw the uh, McDonald's and somebody cooked the omelette from the North McDonald's. Then I saw it become normal because the inside you can pay them the 500 rupees, outside is the 50 rupees, you know, because a lot of people, you know, eating there too. Even sometimes later on, you know, I test that omelette too, but I cook myself, okay? And uh, when I went to India, I saw big potentials, still big potential in India, okay? I said India like a Getting university. If you stay there one year, you learn a lot. If you stay another year, you learn a lot. Honestly, I'm not kidding. You know, uh, you're getting university in India, same. If you stay there five years, you don't want to come back. 
<laughs> Honestly, you don't want to come back. And I take them, a lot of businessmen and business people to India. Uh, mostly the tourism industry, they own a hotel owner, travel company owner. Everybody told me, Murti, you know, can we get injections, medicines, you know? And many people worry. I always told them, you will love it or you will leave it, India. But so far, nobody leave it. Everybody love it, to India. You know, I have a couple of notes also here. You know, it's not easy to do business in India, of course. They do very hard bargain. Mm. I think the biggest problem, sometimes they will not understand. Like, I uh, travel a lot with Indians. Uh, I also bring it, uh, Indians too. Sometimes the, this water costs 100 lira. Sometimes they can say, can you give 10, 10 lira? <laughs> okay, and <laughs> Turkish people become more aggressive, you know, 100 lira, 10 lira. But, uh, of course, in Turkey, we can do bargain too. But if we, if we say, you know, I want to buy the 500 piece, you know, they can come back to, you know, 50 rupees, yeah? And India, you know, if you want to do India the passport, okay, you need to respect India. You need to respect their cultures, yeah? You need to respect their lifestyle, their religions, yeah? and their hospitality. So far, I've been more than 130 countries around the world, okay? But I've been also Asia Pacific, you know, all countries. But when you go to India, like, uh, you feel like uh, hospitality, you feel you will do business, you feel what you want to get it. Of course, uh, owners say the negative things. I, I did not get many negative things. Uh, you know, I cannot say, it, you know, I get these negative things. Of course, small, small things, you know, that somebody cheat you a little, you know, but it's okay, yeah? And, uh, uh, you know, when I compared another country, let me say, it, uh, Indian hospitality, I want to prove it, okay? And uh, one of my friends from Manchester, and they come, Murti, when you come to Manchester, please come to my home, I want to host you. When you call to Manchester, when you ring them, it's not reachable. Okay, they not call, take your call. And, when, you know, sometimes my American friend uh, inviting me, hey man, when you come to America, I want to host you, okay? When you call them, hey dude, I'm not available. <laughs> you know, it's not reachable, you know, not available. But when you call India, okay, uh, and they call you, okay, let me host my, in my palace. They send you driver, they cook you, you know, they show you the hospitality, and easy to do the business in India. But you need to respect India. You need to learn their culture, yeah? Please watch a lot of Indian Bollywood movies, yeah? And then, the, you know, I say to them the India like a university, honestly like a university. A uh, couple of my friends went to India, they learned the yoga. Okay, after three months, she become a yoga teacher in Turkey. Everybody calling, you know, please come our event as a yoga teacher. Even somebody make it in the organic medicine from India. And I said, in India, a lot of opportunity. You need to catch them. Okay, you need to see them. You need to explore. Because I've been the, all over the India. Honestly, never feel like I'm in another country. Yeah. If you show one hand, somebody stop you, you, they can explain to you. And the good things, everybody speak very well English. Maybe not all of them in the village, but uh, if you need taxi, they speak English. If you go to shops, they speak English. Very well English, and they are very helpful. Yeah? And uh, all I want to say, if you want to be, uh, if you want to make a quick business, yeah, go to India. If you want to do your own business, go to India. But please respect India, okay? And please also understand the India. Don't get mad if they do bargain. <laughs> Actually, my friend, this is 100 rupees, okay? 100 rupees, but do bargain, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Honestly, like, I become like Indian. I mean, when I go to Asia, I, I'm going to Indian food because everybody say, too much spicy, come on. But when you eat Indian food, you want to eat again and again, again, again. Even when I'm going to Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, I'm going to Indian food. You know, it's very tasty. 
it's not really spicy too, you know. Mm. When you eat a little bit, you know, you can understand. And also Indian uh, history is very rich. Like, uh, I really enjoy time in Australia, honestly. Because the very peaceful country, you know, you can walk, nobody bother you, yeah? But uh, you can go to the pub and enter them finishing. But India, when you walk down the street, you, somebody play cricket, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, somebody cooking, somebody try to sell something, something that you can see. And honestly, in India, I never ever see big fight in my life. Even the jam traffic, very heavy traffic. Even they go the wrong way, <laughs> you know. They're not gonna stop fighting, you know. They say, okay, even you crash them, you know, you touch their car, it's okay, my friend. Acha, let's go, you know. Even in Turkey, you know, you put the horn and you know, take a stake, you know, you go to fight. In India, honestly, I never ever see the big fight. So I respect India. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wanna be quick riches, you wanna quick open your own business, go to India. Owner said, don't buy an iPhone, go to India. But don't buy an iPhone, go to more country. Don't buy a house, don't buy a car. Mm -hmm. Explore the country, you are a young guy, okay? When you get study, when you learn more, you can easily to make money, like I do, yeah? yeah? Thank you. So let me ask, how many people want to go to India? Put your hands up now. More than before, more okay. Than before, right? yeah. <laughs> Thank you. A, a real Indian lover here. Thank you. And please follow me also if you want to see more Indian, you know, Instagram. Is I will give you the free studies. Yeah, follow <laughs> Murtaza Kalendar on Instagram Thank because you. he's putting a lot of Indian stuff in there. You can learn a lot. So that was a really good uh, word. Uh, don't buy a phone, go to India. Don't buy a house, don't buy anything. Just uh, explore the world. Today we're exploring India. So uh, uh, Mr. Honor Özden has told a lot of opportunity and uh, risks about India, but I would like to ask how do, how do you see the future of the country? What, what kind of uh, uh, a, a, biz a future in terms of uh, business, uh, doing business in India for the life, last uh, five years and maybe more? Because the country is growing very fast, you know. Uh, is my microphone working? Hold on a minute. Hold on. It's nine on the it working? No. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, microphone bir bakabilir miyiz arkadaşlar? One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Bir, iki, üç. Sesim geliyor mu acaba? Sesim geliyor mu acaba? Sesim Bunu geliyor açalım, mu? bunu kullansın. Ya o da olur, fark etmez. Yok, geliyor. Yani. Nerede? Geliyor mu şunu? Geliyor. Ha, harika, tamam, süper. Ha. Süper, süper, süper. It's okay, süper. Uh, okay. Uh, what uh, can Turkey and India do together? This is my idea. Uh, okay, uh, India is a like, huge power in the world. Uh, and uh, Turkey is a huge power where he, where it is at the moment. Uh, there is one thing that I, I don't like in the world, and I always say this, even sometimes it has negative connotations, uh, unipolarity is no good. If, if something is unipolar, if there is only one power in the world, it's no good. So you need to be equilibrium. It has to be like different, uh, different countries, different sectors has to be powerful in different things, and it has to be a collaboration and understanding. Uh, Turkey has intention to make trade with India huge during coming years. How we understand this? Uh, there, there is something called preferable trade country status in Turkey. India is one of them. It's a really important one of them. I, I, so uh, Turkey is the putting on table that we want uh, to be a big trade partner of India. Uh, but it is uh, easy said, not so easy to be to get done. Uh, India, uh, we have lots of sectors, sectors that we are colliding with India. Uh, so we have to have like a good understanding how uh, we can enter trade or uh, prod production uh, in different places that it won't hurt two different economies. 
Uh, if you are not, if as, as the Turkish as the Turkish state, if you are not that careful, India can easily hurt Turkish trade because uh, their production facilities, their human resources, uh, their mentality, they are they, it's sculpted for that. So, uh, but uh, India, what India want, uh, that's what I think, is uh, to uh, to trade as much as possible with countries which are not. Uh, being the sole power of the world trade. So Turkey is a huge chance on that. So, uh, for example, if we can collaborate with India in, uh, trading, uh, in trading areas that India is really powerful, I think we will benefit from it. Uh, if we can choose India from the, in the trade areas that we are choosing from uh, Western states, I mean, comparatively to Western, I think we can profit from it. Uh, what I am meaning is probably people are thinking about textile, about production of cars, production of uh, refrigerators, things like that. I'm not talking about it. For example, space. Sp uh, India has, maybe we don't know as students, maybe you have no idea about it, but India is huge in space. Because we are now talking about Tesla, we are, not, we are talking about Elon Musk, we are talking about everything that Hollywood is marketing towards us. We know those people. Even you know, we don't know them, we see them, we learn from them. But we don't know, for example, in Turkey, I am like 90% sure that the students in here, they don't know about India's achievement on the states, and they don't know how much does it cost. For example, in some states, uh, making some kind of construction project, projects are costing more than India's states, in India's space project. So they can go to the moon with half of the money that you can construct it. You understand? It's unbelievable to me. Like, this is cost effective technology. So you have to touch it somehow. Uh, and uh, about education, India is really good in education. Everybody is talking, even Janan was talking about the, how India's uh, youth and India workers, even the blue collar workers, uh, are uh, competitive and they have understanding and using English. Okay, to me, if you ask me, you don't need to speak English. Because English is something like American dollars. They are imposing on you to speak. You don't. But if you want to do trade, at the moment, it's, the t it's a good tool. So you have to think about it like this. You don't have to, but if you want to do a trade, it's a tool on your hands. E Education-wise, India is quite powerful on that. OK, you will say that it's a British colony because of taxes. I don't think so. India is just investing on ed education. The education is a big thing. Even with the blue work, blue color workers that you're talking about, that I have lots in India, you understand that they have just general knowledge of the world. They have general knowledge of how things are going. So when you compare with our own country, I am feeling a tiny bit ashamed on that. Because similar workers in similar, because I have uh, factories in Africa as well. I have factories in Turkey. I have Africa, Europe, Romania, things like that. When I compare people of similar, for example, like a forklift operator, let's say forklift operator, Ahmed, Ranjay, somebody, James, I compare them, and I can, on my hand, I can just rate them. So I can see that India's education is good on that sense. So we have to collaborate with them, we have to understand what they do and how they achieve this. Also, a tiny uh, remark, I used to be an investment banker, I used to work in Goldman Sachs, and in Goldman Sachs floor, you, when you go there, you will see lots of Turks, for example, like yourselves. Maybe one of, one of you will work in there, like me. You will see, but you will see a huge amount of Indians. You will be shocked. Huh? Is this India? Yeah. Everybody is Indian. And you will go to, uh, like, Thomas and Gay Hospital in, the, uh, in London. You will just go and see that you will, uh, all the doctors are Indians. Uh, they are not British. They are not British Indians. They are Indian Indians. They came, like, five years ago or something. Like, you will be unbelievably shocked. So Indians are everywhere. You go to New York, you go to trading floors, you go to hospitals, you go to lawyers' offices, everybody is Indian. So you have to learn from them. Uh, you don't think like that you are competing with them, but you have to learn from them and their work ethic and they, how they do things. For example, they say they bargain a lot. When you see an Indian doctor or Indian professor working, you'll be shocked. Like, they just, they give themselves what they do. It's, maybe it's because of Hinduism, we don't know. Maybe it's something to do towards life. Maybe it's the poverty, we don't know. Maybe it's something else, maybe it's respect, we don't know. But we have to learn lots from them. And as a university, as your university, your relationship with T-Hub is really interesting because it is a, it is an, a window for you. you. It can open lots of things to you. For example, you think probably that Hyderabad is like a place that we don't know, like probably you have no idea about this place. 
you will be shocked. You will think that if you, if you can go there, which is not really expensive, uh, if you can go there, you will understand that. Why I am going to, for example, to study in Toulouse or something? Why I am not going to study in Hyderabad? It's really interesting because I was thinking when I go there, I was quite shocked because I wasn't expecting what I see in there. So that's why please be open-minded. Yeah. And uh, uh, with this open mind, please uh, just try to act, uh, try to move. And uh, I, I am sure that you will learn lots of things from India and it will help trade. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you yeah. very yeah. much. Yeah. Today, two of, two of our students will go to India and also in Hyderabad and CT Hub. Uh, we are out of time, but for, uh, for the last word, uh, Sarat, would you mind uh, telling a little about uh, GEDEX plans uh, in the future, in the near future I want to go in now. India? I mean, we're scheduled to go in February, I guess, but I guess we need to go in January yeah. after this conversation that yeah, we had. <laughs> big, big opportunity, uh, big potential, uh, and... Uh, we will be a producer in 2024 in the market, we all, but we also have our trading um, business. Um, I would like to give you very, uh, very briefly um, uh, the outcome that I did uh, two weeks ago uh, with one of the potential customers in India. And this, uh, this, this customer that we are trying to do business, uh, uh, having 40 years experience in the market, just focusing on the sugar business, repairing sugar mills after the season. So, and then we had this, this, this Zoom meeting and then she was giving me all this information about the sugar business, the season, the rain, and then how they collect the sugar cane, how they crush them. After they crush them, they need to service the machinery and then, and then I did my study. There are 50 million people in India working for the sugar industry. This is how big the potential is in India. So this is about 60, 70% of the Turkish population. 50 million people, India is number one exporter and one, number one uh, also the consumer of sugar in the world. So you know our company, our students now uh, already know uh, Gedik Welding. We produce uh, you know, our consumables, our machinery for different industry, different segments. There is defense, there is uh, shipbuilding, there is um, uh, steel construction. But this year, my aim is to concentrate on that sugar business mm -hmm. just to get maybe 10 to 20% of this business, and it will be enough for us in 2024. Yes, definitely go to India and definitely get this opportunity, positive feedback that we received from Mr. Murteza. And definitely there is a good potential in the, in the, in the market. But my suggestion, uh, my understanding from the Indian market that you need to be also focused because the market is big. You cannot do everything all in once. You need to know what you're doing. You need to have your agenda in front of you. You need to plan accordingly. accordingly. The seasons are very important. Now, there are rain season, and pretty much the sugar cane is very relative to the, the, the rain that the country is going to get that season. Mm -hmm. that, that's how important that rain is for the sugar. And there are 525 sugar mills in India. In, Tur in Turkey, only 33. So when you make a comparison, yes, India is big. India, big potential, big opportunities. But uh, we are going to be a little uh, specific about what we are going to do in the in the Indian market 2024. Hopefully, when we have this meeting, uh, the submit the second uh, the second Next year, year yeah. I will be giving you our um, experience as a local producer in the market. Perfect. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Sarat Yakar, Mr. Onur so and Mr. Murtaza Kalendar. Thank you for joining us. Okay, now. For the lottery. <laughs> uh, I can have you there. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, as we mentioned many times during the summit since the morning, today uh, we're going to send two of our students to India. We are giving their plane tickets. Uh, and they're not just going to see and visit and uh, be a tourist in, for example, Delhi. They also will experience uh, tea hub in Hyderabad and uh, will understand what we as Gedik University is trying to do there. So I would like to invite uh, uh, Your Excellency on the floor, uh, our Consul General, 
General uh, of India to Turkey and Ms. Hülya Gedik uh, because we're going to do the lottery live. Evet, çekilişi yapacağız sevgili arkadaşlar. İki kişiye Hindistan bileti veriyoruz. Çok kıymetli mütevelliyet başkanımız Zülya Gedik. Bugünün bu önemli zirvenin bu şekilde taçlandırılması konusunda bize destek oldular. Şimdi düğmelerimizi alalım. We're going to push the button and choose the students. Yes, let's push the button. You, Mr. Consul General, first, and then second, uh, Ms. Hülya Gedik. Okay. Let's stop it. No, no, don't do anything. Zeynep Elif Amor, burada mı? Evet, evet, onu yapıyoruz. Burada değilse yedekler üzerinden gideceğiz. Bir kez daha sorayım, Zeynep Elif Amor. Zeynep şansını kaybetti. Uh, okay, we're doing it second time because she's not here. Green'e basıyoruz. Yeşil'e basıyoruz. <gülüyor> Yusuf Malkoç. Buyurun. Kürsüye alalım daha kolay olur hocam. Hocam kürsüye alalım maviye basacağız. Tebrik ediyoruz Yusuf'u. <gülüyor> Böyle hafif bir Hintli edası da var değil mi? Yabancılık çekmeyecek yani. <gülüyor> Evet, tebrik ediyoruz. Hocam, maviye basıyoruz. <gülüyor> maviye mi? Maviye basacağız. Alabilirsin biletini de bir tane daha no, var. It's the next one. Next one, yes. Gel. Tamam. Peki tamam, çok teşekkürler. Detayları arkadaşlarım seni bilgilendirecek. Onu bırakalım istiyorsan. Now it is time for the second ticket. No. Özdemir Çer. Burada mı? Burada Özdemir'e de alkış. Çok sessiz bir şekilde el kaldırdı. Hoş geldin, tebrik ederiz. Hangi bölümdesin? Mekatronik. Mekatronik, mühendis arkadaşlar. Engineers. Yusuf nerede? Yusuf. Yusuf nereye kayboldu? Bileti aldı gitti. Sen sen de mekatronik bölümündesin. Endüstri mühendisliği. Tamam. Bence orada çağırıp hep beraber fotoğraf Yusuf sen de gel hep beraber fotoğraf çekelim. Okay, let's uh, don't go. Uh, we're gonna have a, a picture all together. Burada, burada. Bununla havalimanına git, gitmersen almazlar. <gülüyor> ne yapayım? Burada mı alacaksın? Ee, şeyin önünde alabilir miyiz rica etsek? İyi mi? Ee, şu tarafta çekmen lazımdı o zaman. Tebrik ediyoruz, teşekkürler. Okay, let's, our students are leaving, dear guests, on behalf of Istanbul Gedik University. We express our sincere thanks for your valuable participation. We extend our respects to each and every one of you. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you.
Teşekkür ederiz.